Welcome, strangers. Welcome back, peeps, to the next chapter of the Melrose Adventures. Yes, welcome. Today I'll be showing the Arcane Warrior build that I use for Perilous Difficulty. Uh, with the Arcane Warrior, yes, you can solo some content, but now with my build, my build is more on group content and helping others out as well as being the backstabber of the group. Uh, with this being said, yes, there's other builds that can make the Arcane Warrior more soloish uh, than group play. Yes, there is builds out there. Eventually, I will get to that build. But for now, I'm going to show you the group style play for Perilous Difficulty. And the Arcane Warrior is still powerful. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys the build um, in order by uh, level steps. So you guys can get an idea if you want to follow this. Go right ahead. Alright, so we're going to start in the Mentalism Tree. And we're going to first head off into... Fade Shield. Uh, pretty much what Fade Shield does is going to give us a barrier for 30% of the damage dealt with uh, Spirit Blade. From there, we're going to go for Gathering the Storm. Uh, pretty much what Gathering Storm is all our basic attacks on our staff. It's going to reduce our cooldowns by 0 0.5 seconds, which is phenomenal for the abilities that we will be using. And it will give us a nice willpower unlock plus 3. Okay, so from there, we're going to pick up. Uh, where is it? Come on. There we go. Mind over Matter. Now, with Mind Over Matter, it's pretty much you're immune to flanking now, but you'll, when you're in front of it, uh, of your enemy, or they're in front of you, you'll be less staggered when hit. Now, from there, we're going to pick up Strength of the Spirits. Uh, strength of the Spirits is pretty much going to give our barrier a bonus of 50%, so it takes longer for it to deplete. From there, we're going to pick up Peaceful and Aura. This is great for those kind of, uh, especially when you're going to, towards threatening. As well as if you are going to be doing Perilous and you just want to get that jump and level, this would be a great way to get your threat uh, reduction down. Also have that nice uh, willpower unlock and go around and start, you know, slashing people in the back with your sword. Now from there we are going to go pick up Phasing. Uh, this is another survival ability right here. I found it actually quite Ill quitely useful. Um, it, even though it's a 5% chance with a nice magic unlock plus 3. But, you know, there's those cases that a little bit does go a long way, and this is kind of circumstance where you're going to need it just in case. So you pretty much dodge and you take no damage, so that's even greater in that kind of area. Okay, so now we're going to jump over to Elemental Tree and pick up Rejuvenating Banner Barrier. What Rejuvenating Barrier is going to do is whenever uh, you or your allies have an active barrier, what's going to happen here is that you're going to be able to recover mana or stamina depending on what class you are. But with, in our case, in our Kim War, we're going to get a nice 35%. Uh, mana regeneration while uh, well, we have a barrier, sorry, active. Okay, so from there, we're going to go with the uh, Disturbance of Spirit. With the Disturbance of Spirit, it gives us a chance for us to weaken uh, enemies by 5% five, uh, 5 and the duration of 6 seconds with a nice willpower unlock, plus 3. Okay, so from there, we're going to go down to Encircling Veil. Uh, with the Encircling Veil, it's going to give us a, b a better duration on our weekend uh, by 25%. And on top of it, we get a nice magic unlock plus 3. From there, we're going to go with the Restoration uh, Veil. Uh, what's going to happen here is when you're around weakened enemies, you're going to have a mana recovery of 10%. On top of it, you get a nice magic unlock plus 3, which is another DPS increase for ourselves. Okay, so from there, we're going to get Pool of the Abyss. Uh, what Pool of the Abyss does, it's going to pretty much make an area effect circle. And you drop it to an area where there's a lot of enemies. And instead of, like, say, if you're about to die, you can get to drop it, or a couple of your teammates are trying, you know, going to die, and you want to help them back up. Um, from here, this is what it does: it sucks them all to the center focal point, and they just can't really get out of it till time expires. Now, with the upgrade, it's actually I found it a little bit more interesting. Is due because it weakens, so that means their damage reduction is significantly low. On top of it, you get a nice cooldown reduction, and you have a weakness duration with uh, Shaken Veil as the upgrade. Alright, so from there, we are going to go to Fate Step. This is another one of those uh, abilities that for a nice escape mechanic for yourself, as well as to get yourself out of harm's way, and, or to help your teammates in whichever need. Uh, duration is just 2 seconds, so pretty much you're invisible for 2 seconds, but a cooldown 10.2, so it's, it's pretty much a type of combat role. Okay, so, oh, well, I, gosh, sorry about that. All right, so from there, we're actually going to go to Smothering Veil. I kind of forgot about this. Uh, weakened enemies actually have their damage reduction by 30%. On top of it, you get a nice little willpower unlock plus 3. Then we go to Twisting Veil. Now, Twisting Veil, what's going to happen is pretty much you're going to get a uh, damage bonus against weakened 
by 15% with a nice magic unlock plus 3, which is actually quite good, um, especially with all the chances and the, with Arcane Warrior being an Arcane Warrior and you're slashing a Bastion and going your way through it, um, weakening him, it can actually make you survive a lot easier, as but also reduce their damage, but on top of it, you give you more damage just because they are weakened, so that means your slashes and your, pretty much your attacks are going to be a lot more effective. Alright, from here we're going to go with Arcing Surge. Uh, the reason I went with this is it's pretty common for all Arcane Mages to go with this. Uh, due for the fact it does um, hit multiple targets with the upgraded from Chain Lightning. Um, the distance is increased, but also hits two more targets, so it gives you a better chance to re regenerate your shield completely. Now, from there... <clears throat> We are going to go for Compose. Now with Compose, it's pretty much all a, a, just an increase. You get a Willpower increase by 5, you get a Magic Unlock uh, increase by 2, as well as Constitution Unlock plus 2. Now, that is entirely awesome. It really is. So, I'm gonna, now I'm going to show you guys the, the gear I use for my Arcane Warrior. Uh, you probably guys have better and whatnot, but for the time being, yes. It has been a while, so... Yeah, bear with me on this one. Alright, so for right here, I actually have the uh, Staff of Dragon for my Arcane Warrior. Uh, just due for the fact is that it has crit chance, it has attack speed, but on top it has a heal and kill. And it does have a spirit rune, you can use any kind of rune you uh, please. Uh, as I always say, if it, since the Staff of Dragon does deal automatic fire damage, uh, go with another rune that actually deals a different kind of element. Uh, it can actually help you in the long run, trust me. <laughs> Yeah, I, I definitely know that for much. Alright, from there, I actually picked up the superb cooldown ailment. Uh, even if you have a 5% uh, cooldown modifier, as I always say in all my videos for my Dragon Age, Inquisition, multiplayer builds, all except for Virtual So, um, a little bit goes a long way. If you have a 5, go for it. Seriously, just do it. It'll, it'll help you out greatly it really will and even help you out with some of your passives too for your next year barrier and whatnot from there i actually picked up a 10 percent heal bonus uh for my belt as well as the five heal and kill uh just because um since we're gonna be a lot more melee not less ranged uh for that fact is that i thought it'd be a nice little trade-off just because it could make us survive a lot quicker especially if we don't have shield up and we're just running oom uh and we just have staff, auto staff attacks, then so be it. It actually might help help you out greatly. Help me out too, in parallel. Um, and on top of that, I got enhanced barrier ring and increased the barrier power by 30%. Um, this one I actually mistaken. I because since we don't really have a barrier, it's, it's kind of debatable. I'm not exactly sure if it really does work. I've been trying to test it out and I haven't seen the difference. But um, from there, you can actually go with your auto attack if you want, or you can also go with uh, armor penetration when you're using your sword. But either way, yeah. All right, peeps, this is my Arcane Warrior for Perilous Difficulty group content, not meant for solo wing. You can solo routine if you want. All right, peeps, I'll catch you guys in the next chapter. Stay awesome.